I'm back! Did you miss me? Hi friends, my name is Financial Aid Packet today because that's what NYU didn't give me. I'm still a little salty. If you don't know by now, I go to NYU. I think every person who's been accepted slash attends the college happens to mention it every time they have a conversation with you. Or annoying, I'll admit that, but I'm currently a sophomore at Tannen School of Engineering. And this year, I'm in my own apartment with three other roommates who are my best friends. That's right, Frederick is an adult. He has a lease now. He does his own laundry. He cooks, he cleans, he does vacuuming. And I wake up to two chihuahuas at 8 a.m. when they're going on a dog walk right under me. Or I wake up to the police sirens at 2am. If you don't remember last semester I was in a college dorm and that was a requirement. Most freshmen are required to dorm in the college for at least two semesters. But this year I was allowed to go off campus so my friends and I chose to get our own apartment because it's not only cheaper but you get more freedom and you're not limited to the tiny room they give you. And surprisingly it's much easier to vlog here because last semester I had to deal with people going in and out but this time everyone is understanding they're considerate and we're just friends so it's just easier. I know a lot of you are going into high school, are in high school, or are thinking about post-secondary education. So I wanted to document my experience going back to college because I know a lot of people are worried about going to college or university. You don't know what to expect, what to bring. And for that, I say go back to my old videos. I'll link some up here. Or you can wait until our podcast episode. That's right, she got a podcast too. It's right up here. We're gonna be answering all your questions about college and quarantine eventually because I still am in quarantine, unlike LA. Just a disclaimer, this is not going to be your experience. Everyone's experience is unique. I'm in New York, I'm in Brooklyn. If you're in a rural state, you can most likely get a house for the same price. And my experience is just a little unique because I am a YouTuber, I do carry an excessive amount of things that I don't need, such as camera equipment, and I'm just a general hoarder because that runs in the family, and you're going to find out what I brought because <laughs> it's quite a lot. Also, money is not really an issue. I can pay for my own things here except for tuition. We're working on that. This is not me trying to brag. I just want to make this clear that I'm not trying to tell you to move into an apartment by 19. If you're smart, you will stay at home with your family in quarantine because it's a free house for you and they supply you with food and a bed. Whereas if you go to college, you're going to be stuck in that room all day anyways. And I don't want to make anyone feel lesser than for not having what I have. I just simply want to show you what I brought because it might give you an idea of what you should and shouldn't bring. None of this is sponsored, unfortunately. I just hope you guys understand this video is not only for you guys, but it's for myself. I want to look back on it in a few years because I'm sentimental, okay? I'm a cancer. <laughs> and everything I show in this video will be linked in my Amazon shop. I'm not going to bother labeling 50 plus items in my description. And I will mention some specific tools or just supplies that I think will make your college life a little easier, such as a Swiffer Sweeper. <laughs> Anyways, let's begin the movement. It all started on August 18th, 2020. My roommates and I had just finalized the lease to our apartment and I had three days to pack up everything before I had to move to New York. Now, we've been planning for this apartment for months now. I had months to pack. I just procrastinated, so please don't do that. You're gonna miss some stuff. I've moved three times now and I've traveled a little bit, so I know what it's like to pack things. But every time I go somewhere, I bring a house. I bring everything with me. I prepare like a zombie apocalypse will happen every second. The more clips I show, the more apparent it's gonna be and you're gonna judge me for it. I know. I'm sorry, it runs in the family. But when you're moving to a college apartment, you have to be mindful of the people around you because they are also moving in. They need a space too. You can't hog the entire kitchen and drawers and cabinets. So I had to pack mindfully and find ways to store things easily. So I had storage bins. I had to find things that could be stacked on top of each other. And if you don't know by now, now, city apartments, especially in LA and New York, are like the average size of a classroom. This is a two-bedroom apartment. It's less than a thousand square feet. Let that sink in for a second. Do the math. In fact, the height of this ceiling is 10 feet and the length of this room is eight. So we could literally have a quadruple bunk bed and still be able to fit everyone. Because I've moved a little bit, I already had an idea of how much I'll be able to fit. I managed to fit everything back in my last dorm, but we were given six drawers and a big shelf. And the closet spaces are what really gets to you because you can't bring your whole wardrobe. 
So I started with the closet I came out of and basically Marie Kondoed my clothes. If it didn't bring me joy, I wasn't bringing it. And I should already know that if a clothing doesn't give me joy, I shouldn't even buy it or keep it. And if it wasn't appropriate to wear between August and October, I wasn't bringing it. So no winter coat for me, one rain jacket, one light jacket, and some sweaters. My first tip is don't bring your entire closet. I know this varies. Some people love clothing. They have dupes of everything, but in general, you don't want to have two yellow shirts that are identical. Graphics and patterns can be different, of course, but just know that you don't need 30 different shirts for college. You can have 30 in total, trust me, it's easy to roll, but you want to have seven for maybe sleeping and five for working out. You know, you have to make sure they're multi-purpose because everything in college has more than one use. This desk is not just a desk, it is also where I game, I work, store, <laughs> and decorate. I was able to fit my entire closet in a suitcase and I know I'm putting in a box right now, I'll tell you why later, but because I knew that I will be going back home to pick up my winter clothes, I knew I didn't have to bring half my wardrobe because my parents like it when I visit them once a month for three days and do absolutely nothing in the house. They just like my company, but that's not a privilege everyone can have. Sometimes people are going overseas or really great distances across the country. You're not going to have the opportunity to bring your winter clothes back and forth. So if you're that person, bring everything, hope for the best, or buy some clothes in the area when you need them. Because your closet space is very limited, especially when you're sharing with others. I remember our closet back in NYU was yay big. They look like full length lockers and I just put most of my stuff in drawers instead. Personally, I brought seven sleeping shirts, most of my sweaters, some workout clothes, my favorite pants, and one shorts because I hate wearing shorts. My outfits don't change throughout the season and I don't like showing my legs, if you can tell. I say that as I'm wearing shorts in this time lapse. So once I had all my clothes laid out on the bed, I had to start folding them into the box. And I feel like a lot of people just don't know how to fold properly. This is something you need to know, by the way. Your parents aren't gonna fold for you. They're not gonna do your laundry or your dishes. That's all on you now. Sometimes people aren't raised independently. My parents taught me and my sister how to do this stuff at a young age so we would do it ourselves but I know there are some people out there whose parents do the dishes for them does the laundry for them but I can't tell you how many people messed up laundry and dryers on the first night we get our own washer and dryer in our apartment but if you're in a dorm it's all in one room so everyone's gonna be in there especially at 2 a.m. and sometimes they they'll leak or they burn the dryer and also cooking folding cleaning a bathroom those are all things you will need to know along the way but know how to do it properly using your scrub in the toilet for your sink no, I'm speaking from firsthand experience. And I was doing all of this folding at midnight and I was already tired. So by the time I finished, it was 2 a.m. and I decided to call a night. So this marks the end of day one. Day two was getting the rest of the things in my bedroom organized into boxes. Since I already started with my bedroom, it made sense to finish everything else in there. And it was just a lot of miscellaneous items and tools such as a clothing steamer, lint remover, hangers, laptop case. Once again, not naming everything, but Amazon shop if you're curious. And obviously I need a my plushies, especially my pug. Once I was done with my bedroom, it was time to move into my office space. This is when things got tricky. Because my sister has not lived with us for a while, she's doing her own thing, being a pharmacist. I was allotted a lot more room in the upstairs area, so I had a bedroom, my own bathroom, and an extra room that I could do anything with, so I set that up to be my filming area and my gaming area. Because 9 out of 10 gamers are gamers. Right, Jenna? But this meant I had a lot of storage and space to work with. Because you all know, I've done random videos with a lot of art supplies, a lot of random things that you don't need, and they just eventually started stockpiling in the closets. But I know I couldn't bring them, so I had to pick what to bring. Even though I still brought that thing that you have seen in every video. There was no way I could fit all my paintings in here, but I did bring the bold and brush one and my Minecraft painting. Still hate it, still mad at it. And of course an excess of decorations. I bought a new desk instead of bringing the one you currently see in the office just because that one doesn't have any shelves and I figured I need to make use of all the vertical space we're given. So using bunk beds is a good idea. Having a desk that can have multiple shelves is a good idea. If you have a loft bed, it's really convenient. My other other two roommates have two loft beds because it works as storage, workplace, and sleeping. Multifunctional, do we see the trend here? I did bring my desktop though, only one of them, because I knew two could not fit on this desk because I can't leave my gamer friends behind, obviously. And also, I do live stream on Twitch, so if you want to see more of those, 
go follow. My office has a lot of things that I don't need, but it would be very, very nice to have them. And that's how I feel about everything I own. So there was no way I couldn't just bring my camera equipment, obviously. But given the extra items that I have in the room, such as wooden blocks, a bunch of other art stuff that I wanted to do, it was best to leave it at home because it simply would not fit here. And I wouldn't worry too much if I were you because not everyone has to carry their own equipment for their job wherever they go. I have a whole space dedicated to painting stuff and art stuff and then another space in my closet dedicated to cameras. And I did bring my paint just because I knew I could put a corner shelf in there. So this is basically everything. I need to move a trash can, a bunch of decorations, electronics, computers. I put two pillows. Hopefully it won't break my monitor during the move. The stupid painting that I still hate and what's in here? I forgot. And that's why you're supposed to label things, Frederick. Thank you for not labeling the box. I also have to bring this backpack and that backpack. I'm not bringing Michael with a B. He's too fat. I'm sorry. I'll probably make Jesus. I'll probably make a miniature version of him. Also, do not ask why there's so many rainbows. By the time the sun was setting, and you can tell it is because my face was glowing rainbow at that point with this thing on my windowsill, I had finally finished packing my office. Then there's the bathroom. Mmm, Frederick, the bathroom. <laughs> what could be in there? Uh, your hair dye kit, your hair cutting tools, your skincare mountain. Yeah. Just a little bit of that. My excuse for having this stuff is because vanity was not a big thing when I was little, nor was it for my parents. So when I got bullied for having a unibrow and acne, subconsciously, I buy a lot of these things. That's my excuse. I'm pretty sure that's not the reason, but I just like having backups for my backups and my backups and backups. Like what if someone steals my cleanser? I got another one. But what if I want to give that one to my friend? I have one for that too. So from skincare to hair care to hair altering products, I don't need half of them, literally, because I'm the type of person who will buy $50 worth of stuff just to get free shipping and to make sure I have all the hair dye in the world in case the other ones go bad. I had six shampoos because they were $2.50 at TJ Maxx. Are you getting a sense of how impulsive I am and how I'm a victim of consumerism? It's irrational, it's irresponsible, but I can't help myself. All right, let's see what we got in here. A cleansing oil, another cleanser, a cleanser. What's this? A cleanser, a moisturizer, a moisturizer, a sunscreen slash moisturizer. Oh, this is another cleanser. Fenty Beauty, Rihanna, I love you. A night cream, lip balm, serum, serum, toner. Uh. Oh, serum, two more lip balms, a mask, and a toner. Oh, another box. Cleansing balm, two deodorants, and all this is toothpaste. You can tell I have a problem. I'm pretty sure most other people will be fine because I don't think you're hoarding as much as me. And I'm glad you're not because it's honestly unnecessary. Last year, I did have to store all of these in their own dedicated drawer and a shower caddy because we all shared one bathroom. So you don't just want to leave your products out because sometimes they don't clean the bathroom. So i rather not have all my products just laying out there to catch dust and bacteria. Just be aware of that when you move to college. Your shower caddy is your best friend. So my mom found a bunch of boxes at some place. I think it was Costco. And it had the word eggs on top of them. But those boxes were really convenient because not only were they already foldable, but they had handles on the end and it'd be easy to carry them in and out of the apartment. Because that's another thing you have to think about. How many trips are you willing to take between the car and your room? And if you're bringing your parents, usually you want to carry the more heavy stuff. So. I didn't want my dad to do it, so I varied the weights of all my boxes. One's for my mom, one's for my dad, and one's for me, which is like the big suitcase, big boxes. Because the apartment doesn't always tell you all the time what they have and how big the elevator is. You can email your college to ask, are you gonna be supplying us with trolleys or the big bins that you can just push into the elevator. Now let's get to the packing of this bathroom. I first started with my storage drawers that had all my extra supplies. And Frederick said it best, I definitely have a problem hoarding skincare. Why did I bring all my extra supplies, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. Let me try to convince you. I review them on my second channel. And I also just like testing out different products because I'm on a mission to find the perfect products to clear up all of this. I'm far away from you for a reason. And I'm not planning on visiting my home as often as I used to because before the pandemic during college I would just go on a train and transit an hour and 30 down to my house and stay for a little bit and get some extra stuff if I needed it but this time I don't want to risk giving anything to my parents or my aunt and uncle because they're still in town I'd rather just take everything 
hold it, make sure I don't have to go home as often. Because if I were to go to the train, I'd have to go to Penn Station, which if you don't know, is the epicenter of all transportation basically in New York. It's always crowded there. If you live in New York, you know how much everyone hates it. Still not a reason to bring six cleansers. I know, I know. But the hoarding doesn't stop at just skincare. I managed to bring all my makeup, hair care, and self-care tools with me to college because our apartments have similar drawers to the ones in my room. And apparently I can't function without six hair masks. So there you go. I did leave some extra things at home, some like the six extra shampoos from TJ Maxx because I don't think I'll be needing them anytime soon. I don't run through shampoo that fast. So if I didn't plan on using it for the next three months, I just wouldn't bring it. And you saw that correctly. I did have to bring out a second box just for my bathroom. Take note, children, don't hoard. I also wanted to reorganize everything because I noticed that I had a lot of boxes and square things and then bottles. I threw them in initially and I'm rather just organize them so everything is tightly packed so when you're packing please don't shove all your clothes into a suitcase fold them so they don't turn out wrinkly it's just things that will make your moving a little bit better if you take the time to do it and i know most people are just like throw it in i don't care that's fine but i can't do that i like being organized so all three rooms are done next up is the basement now you're wondering what's in the basement frederick that's where my parents hoard things you think i'm bad my dad has three extra monitors two extra tvs from craigslist we have two extra vacuums for spare parts why do we need all of it in case of an emergency my dad says and while i do think it is smart to keep all your things and just throw them away you could use a garage sale now and then. Just wait until my dad finds out about Facebook Marketplace. That basement will be filled. Anyways, everything I had in the basement was stuff I already brought home from college and I wouldn't use in my room, but I knew I wanted to bring it back, such as the string lights and a desk lamp that I failed to bring because I forgot it and most of my decorations on top. I also needed to grab my suitcases because I figured those are very easy to transport, might as well bring them. And we also needed furniture like tables, chairs, couches, lamps. We didn't buy a furnished apartment, so this is an empty room. And I did bring my floor lamp. I've had it for a while. You've seen it in videos a long time ago. I also brought our TV since we have so many extras. But in terms of the couch and furniture, we had no idea what to do. We could go to Ikea, and I haven't even been to Ikea before this, but I did vlog it. If you want to see, it will be on my second channel eventually. So Ikea was an option, but I already had furniture at the time. It's just that they were not pretty. Some of them were over 10 years old, no one used them anymore, it had a paisley design, and it was just too big because that couch I had in my basement didn't pull out like a futon, and I had no idea how to transport it because we tried to get a U-Haul, but all the trailers were rented out by the time we went on the website. I would have brought extra furniture in the basement, like tables and chairs, but they were also pretty big. The table was very round and we needed a square one or a folding one. We still don't have one yet actually. So because of that, I went back to let's bring two cars instead. Now what was I going to put in those suitcases you might ask? Well, when I packed all of my clothes in that box initially, I tried carrying it after. I could barely carry it, which meant there was no way I was going to let my dad carry it. And I also wanted to double check all the clothes I brought because it felt like a lot and I wanted to make sure everything brought me joy. So I organized it back into the suitcase. Case. Yes, it's yellow. What did you expect? And I was actually able to let go of four or five different other pieces of clothing. Make sure to double check your clothes. You might end up letting go of some things and you might free up your wardrobe even more. But don't forget underwear because that is the second thing I forgot to bring from my house. Those were literally the two things I forgot, a desk lamp and underwear. Then I went back to the office because I have this amazing yellow chair that you see, and I wanted to bring it with me, of course. I did not want to buy another chair, but I had to dismantle it first. So I took the trusty L-shaped screwdriver thingy that always breaks, and I took the wheels off. And finally, everything upstairs has been fully packed. I thought. You'll see why later. We just had to move it all downstairs and it actually wasn't that bad considering the fact that I have not worked out in a while until then and I treated it as my exercise. Granted, I could have made less trips if I just packed everything in more boxes, but I was very stubborn and tired at that point. And another thing, the trash cans that I have, I brought two, they're both yellow. Empty them out before you go and then put things in them to make up most of your space. So this is everything at this point. There's a lot I didn't show on camera because it was already bought before this video and I wasn't gonna open them until I got here. So it was my desk, my mattress, my bedding. And now we're done packing. I wish. Mary, we're not even halfway done yet. We haven't even considered what my mom already started packing since April. So I had to start repacking all of her stuff 
because she packed way too much. I know it's just a thing that moms do. They want to make sure you have enough food. They want to make sure you don't run out. And she brought a big rice bag and I said, I'm not putting that in the room because there's nowhere to put it. Our apartment kitchen is pretty big, but it's not as big as what she was hoping for. So we had to bring a lot of stuff back, such as a rice cooker, because my roommate already brought one and my other roommate brought a smaller one and I did not want three rice cookers in this building. But I just needed a lot of glass storage in this kitchen. Necessities like flour, sugar, spices, tools, like spatula, silicone, utensils, all of that we needed. And I wanted to make sure I brought the pans, the pots, my kombucha making kit. There was no way I was leaving her. I also brought a lot of snacks, like $35 worth of salt and vinegar chips because I love them. And because I bake and cook a lot, I needed to get things for that, such as whisk, baking bowls, that's not a thing, mixing bowls, and pots and pans. Just everything that you needed in a kitchen because we were starting from nothing. And I can't just leave my lemons alone, so I had to bring my lemon juicer and my Nutribullet. I managed to fill about four to five boxes worth of kitchen stuff, so it was around 40% of all the things that I was bringing actually. And that's why I'm trying to justify why I needed two cars because the first time I moved, I only brought one car and the only kitchen thing I brought was a mini fridge because I did not have a kitchen in that dorm. And you might not either. With my luck, my dad came home just as I finished packing everything or so I thought and it was time to start loading the car. And yes, I said car, no S, singular because my dad had this thing on the back of his truck that was like an extension. So this is what we're working with for the outside. Outside. And the rest has to fit in there magically. It gave around one foot more of space to put things and we would be able to bungee cord things together and put a cover over it. So it was basically like extending the end of the car. Problem is that is nowhere near enough to fit everything. I knew that. My dad refused to know that because he didn't want to pay extra tolls for two cars. We don't know what tolls are. Every time you go in between a state, you have to pay for them. But after 30 minutes of arguing with him, I said, okay, fine, let's do it your way. We'll see how the one car method works first. So we started with the boxes, obviously, made sure to stack them as tightly as we could. And because my mom was coming with us, we had to save an extra seat in the back where I'd be sitting. But if she wasn't, we would be able to have much more space because the seats are detachable. This meant we had to work with this much space. Do you like my diagram? I spent a lot of time on it and this video is probably very long so if you could just like share comment subscribe if you want that'd be great that'd be killer help a boy out please but after four items in the car basically the car was filled we didn't even put in the big packages that i had it was just boxes that i carried and i told him dad you think we can do this do you honestly think we can fit everything in there. He was reluctant at first, but after 20 minutes of arguing and broken Chinese, he eventually caved and let me get another car, which was mine. My good old Mazda mom van from 2002 or five. And don't make fun of the van, it's actually able to carry a lot of things and we normally use that car to transport items. So now I had no doubts to fit everything. I knew it would be possible, so I had much more room to work with and I had more excuses to bring more things. After an hour of moving everything inside the cars, we managed to completely fill both cars up. I mean, to the point where I could not see behind me almost. So mission accomplished is what I would say. There were two more steps we had to do before we finished moving. Drive to New York for two hours and move everything into the apartment. Sounds easy, right? Not when you're me. Even though I have driven six hours to a location before, I've never driven through a big city like New York. I'm not an anxious driver, I've not gotten a ticket, but it just makes me worried to go into the city at all. And I was also worried that my mom would not be able to get that car back home because she is the worst driver of all of us. Sorry, mom, I'm putting you on the spot. My dad is great. He's the one who has driven everything when we had road trips. He's the one who has driven to New York to come pick me up at times. So at 8 a.m., I put put on my bucket hat. I forgot to take my vitamin that day and I'm gonna take it right now because I also forgot. Thank you for reminding me, Frederick. You're welcome, Frederick. I packed all the extra stuff I forgot to bring downstairs, like the other smaller suitcase, some skincare that I had to use in the morning, last minute things I found, and my parents already drove off and were waiting for me on the road. But I told them to wait for me because I wanted to take one last look at the home I was about to leave for the next year. Sure, I can go back and visit, but New York is going to be my home for the next year and probably for a while now. I know a lot of people say they hate home and trust me, I've been there. We've all had that rebellious teenage phase, but I'm just a sensitive cancer who really likes to reminisce on childhood memories. And I like looking back at them because I made a lot in that house, even though it was pretty new when I moved. While it wasn't my original home back then, it was still 
a great place to stay and <laughs> that sounds like a hotel. I just wanted to look back at my parents' house because th they raised me. They literally gave me this life and all the opportunities I have today and I can't thank them enough for that. And I didn't want to be that person who says they'll leave home and never look back at it and just forget about their parents. I know when people go to college, sometimes you have a bad relationship with your parents. I know there's always exceptions. They're my parents at the end of the day. I want to keep in touch with them personally, so it's it was hard leaving everything because it was I've never seen it empty like that. So thanks mom and dad um, and sister, even though you couldn't come because you were working when I was moving. I'll see you soon, hopefully. But enough of the sappiness, we're headed off to New York. The tolls weren't bad, but granted it was easy pass, so I didn't have to worry about the tolls. They just were shipped to my dad's mailbox. Thank you dad for paying for them. But I was very anxious and worried about the drive, as I already told you. My dad is the greatest driver I know. He is the one who has driven to New York the most. I have driven a good amount too. Too, but he never taught me how to drive with 200 pounds in the car, especially in the city. So I was worried about myself. While I've driven hours to different areas, New York is its own habitat. It's like a rite of passage. You don't deserve to be in New York if you can't drive through. Obviously, I didn't film myself while driving because I didn't want to promote the idea of multitasking while on the wheel, especially on a highway. So please don't use your phone while driving. And to YouTubers, I don't understand why you all feel the need to speak to a camera while on the wheel. Did I Wait till you're at a parking lot or at a stoplight. But everything went great, except for one mishap. On the New Jersey Turnpike, you gotta love New Jersey drivers. I was right behind my dad because I didn't want anyone to go in between us and we wanted to stick together because I was following his GPS as well. We did not separate at all throughout the trip, but when you're on a highway, you need a certain amount of space in between you, obviously, and it was enough for another car to squeeze through. I didn't think it was possible, but I saw a car behind me going over 100 miles per hour. That's around 161 kilometers per hour to anyone outside the US. Why do I know this? Well, I try to calculate its velocity by looking at landmarks as it passed and counting the seconds it took to pass each landmark, compared it to my speed and my time, and then round it from there. I'm also assuming it's over 100 because I could hear it zooming towards me, and it literally sneaked in between me and my dad to the right lane in front of my dad again, back to the passing lane all under a second. He literally Mario Karted it and I would have said something, I might have gone on the police and like said, hey, there's a dangerous driver probably, you should think about this. But the license plate went out of my view in a split second and I was just so shocked at the time because I, I wasn't paying attention too much. I will admit, I'm kind of impressed, right? That's a skill. But once again, don't do that. You don't need to. I'd like to think it was literally a gay male listening to Lady Gaga whilst making a TikTok. Finally, we arrived in Brooklyn. From gentrification to pollution, the city, I don't know if this is good to say, literally made me tear up when I saw it in my vision and I didn't record that, but here are some pictures that I took in past trips. And we got to the parking lot. It was actually inside the apartment. The lot was connected to the lobby room and it was more convenient than I thought. It only took three trips to get everything out of the car because they supplied us with these big trolleys that you see in hotels typically. However, the keys were in the apartment and two of my roommates had already moved in, but they went back home to get more stuff. And I asked the apartment, could you open it for me when I move in? And they said, sure, but it was still locked. They said they didn't have a key to get in, so they had to print a new one. I didn't really understand that because I'm just assuming every apartment has a universal key that can work because these are magnetized. It's not the screw on. Either way, it took 30 minutes and instead of waiting because one of our cars was on the timer, they gave us tickets because parking in New York is never free. One of the cars was allowed to stay for free, but the other one was on a timer, so every hour we would be charged. So to use our time wisely, we just decided to move everything up to the apartment right outside the door and then hopefully by then the key is ready. Now all we had to do was move everything into the general area and find out what I didn't need because I knew I would be bringing stuff back. And I know a lot of you guys are still questioning whether or not I can be able to fit everything, I'm just going to tell you I was and I just had to take around one box home. It seems unlikely, but I'm just good at making most of my space. I'm good at hiding things, basically. And anything is possible in Frederick's world. That being said, I already started noticing some extras in the apartment. One of my roommates had a Swiffer Sweeper. I also brought a Swiffer Sweeper. We all brought pasta, we all brought rice. So like, those were the types of things that I could spare some. Once everything was moved in, all I had to do was organize everything. I didn't want my parents to do it for me because I don't personally like 
like how my mom organizes our kitchen. Sorry, mom. And I wanted to do it our way. I wanted to talk to all my roommates about it and get on the same page. Plus, it's just easier to know where your stuff is when you organize it yourself. And our car was on a timer, so they had to leave pretty soon. First, I started with the bathroom. As you can see, our mirrors have shelves, which made me so happy because of all the skincare I had. In my first semester, I had to share that entire mirror with four people, and now I get it all to myself. And the bottom units were pretty big drawers, so I was able to fit everything. And the way I personally organize is I set everything outside in the general area and see what I'm using the most often. Those would be put in the front. So in the back, I had all my extra things, all the extra, extra things, and just tools that I don't need to use but would like to have just in case. As for my mirror shelves, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to see judgment in the comments. Skincare means a lot to me. I think we all have those things that we like to collect. This is it for me. And I managed to fit everything 50-50 down the middle because we had two mirrors which meant my roommate had her own side and uh, her own bottom drawer. I did not want to go into her space. I managed to do it perfectly equally. And after three hours of moving, my parents ate their lunch and said goodbye. Obviously didn't record that because that ruins a heartfelt moment in my opinion, but it was emotional. My parents have finally left and now I gotta organize the rest of this. Oh, y'all thought I was done. No, I have to make a desk. I have to put down my mattress. I have to organize this closet. Organize this. Organize all of this and all of that. But it's fine because welcome to New York. I'm just gonna play tacky New York songs while finishing all of the rest. I had to organize everything in that apartment and get the boxes and trash out before my other roommates arrived in the next two days. I also decided to take the bean bag out at this point, which I bought because I just, I really like bean bags. It's yellow, of course, and it looked like it'd be a great fit for the living room, but that was before it started rapidly expanding. I also organized the majority of my kitchen supplies and food. One cabinet was dedicated to just soy milk, and then I tackled the big boxes. The heaviest one was the desk, and I had to set up myself. Now, I am no stranger to setting up things. I am not good at it though, because I like doing things on my own accord, and I don't like to follow instructions. So you can already tell IKEA furniture is a struggle for me. Just take a wild guess on how much I messed up. I'll just, I'll let you guess. Four times. Electric chair. I know they tell you not to screw everything so tightly. I know they tell you to double check are you using the right rod. It just makes it harder if you don't listen to the instructions. But I read the instructions and made the executive decision to improvise. <laughs> Let's say it did not work out all the time. I did mess up badly, but I would often misalign the pieces because my desk had a shelf that looked like this. And I was convinced that I lined it up evenly with the other side, but apparently not. Okay, my camera died, but... We're back. And with a screensaver now, isn't she cute? Before I was so rudely interrupted, back to what I was saying. I didn't mess up badly, but I just had four missteps that held me back about an hour because it took two to three to finish it. Halfway through, I got frustrated because I could not finish it and decided to eat because I had not eaten breakfast or lunch at that point. But when I went into the living room, I noticed the bean bag turned into a bean pillow, mattress, lump. The thing that Tori Vega jumped into? It expanded a lot and we still needed a couch. So I got worried that we wouldn't be able to fit it now. But I didn't want to think about where to put the bean jump castle. <laughs> I just ate some rice and vegetables. And because I had no furniture yet besides the bean bag that I did not want to get food on, I ate like this. Welcome to college. After lunch, I was still salty about my inability to finish the desk and I wanted to redeem my Home Depot realness. You know, I go to engineering school, I wanna make sure that I can at least do the things that I'm supposed to do. So I decided to go full on dad and do the Wi-Fi. It was actually really easy to do once you figure out the instructions because I read them now. But the only thing I had trouble was was figuring out which outlet the Wi-Fi came from because they were six outlets available. Eventually I figured it out so you could say she's an engineer now. Finished making the desk, thank god, and I did not want to decorate yet. I was not in the mood because it was time for dinner. It was already midnight and after that I just washed dishes, cleaned the floor, and had to go to sleep. I sleep on a Japanese floor mattress which sounds very weird to you probably. It's not as common in western culture as it is in Asia but I just like it because it helps with my back and it keeps me more energized when I wake up because memory foam makes me groggy and with this, I can wake up at 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. It also coincidentally fit perfectly under my roommate's bed, so it basically turned to a bunk bed, and that let us have a lot more space right here because I used to sleep right in the center of the room. Day four was when my roommates were gonna come back, and that meant I had to get rid of all the boxes because if their parents came, 
they would judge me. So I woke up at a good 7.15 a.m., got up, did everything, and got rid of all the excess packaging and recycled it. And I opened my curtains just to see our amazing view of another building, which means I'm prone to seeing naked people. And then my roommates arrived, which means this is the end of my move-in. There's a lot more that we did. I have decorated a lot. As you can see, this has been fully set up. And I will show a room tour eventually, just in a later video. But if you would like to see more daily vlogs and our personal lives around New York in quarantine. You can follow the second channel just so you can see how mediocre a college student's life can be. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the future. Obviously my content will change and I can't do everything that I want, but you'll get to see more of my friends. I'm excited for this new semester and just this year in New York. I can't wait to just just live because I'm done having cabin fever. So if you enjoyed, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every week, turn on my notifications because I don't know my schedule now. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three. Oh, now I can finally turn on the air conditioner because it's so loud. Listen to this. That's not, that's not it. Bye.